BMEN 2151 students. This video will provide you with a general overview of the BMEN 2151 Machining Lab. Please note that this is not a replacement for the in-person instruction you will receive during the lab. Follow your instructor's directions as they may be different from the procedure presented here. Before coming to the shop, please ensure you are wearing long pants and closed toe shoes. If possible, wear short sleeves, but long sleeves are okay if they can be rolled up securely to at least the elbow. When you enter the shop, safety glasses can be found in the tan cabinet to the right of the door. Find a pair you like and put them on. Should you need them, over-the-ear hearing protection can be found to the left of the door. Individually packed disposable hearing protection can be found in the cabinet. Before proceeding, roll up long sleeves, remove jewelry such as bracelets, watches, and rings, and tie up long hair. Now that you've gone through the safety check, find your instructor and get started. Lift the saw and insert your stock material into the vise. Measure from the saw blade to the end of your material. The stock should stick out approximately two and one eighths to two and one quarter inches. Ensure the vise is clamped tightly by pulling up on the black clamping handle. Squeeze the trigger on the saw handle to start the cut. The saw will stop automatically when the cut finishes. Repeat this procedure for the square stock. Insert the end mill into the collet and then insert the collet into the spindle. Pull the power drawbar control toward the in position. Spindle speed is given by the dial on the front of the machine. The tick mark indicates the speed. Turn the spindle on and adjust the speed with the hand wheel to 1200 RPM on the inner scale of the dial. Do not attempt to change the speed with the spindle turned off. Measure and make note of your rough cut stock length. Using parallels, secure your part in the mill vise. Fixture the part with approximately one half inch of stick out from the side of the vise. Use a mallet to ensure your part seats on the parallels properly. Tighten the vise and set the handle aside. Use the hand wheels to move your part close to the end mill. Be careful not to crash the vise into the end mill. Taking small cuts, mill the first end smooth. Remove your part and measure the length, taking note of how far you are from the length specified in the print. Deburr the part if necessary. Refixture the part in the mill vise as before with the unfinished end protruding. Face the unfinished end and take the part to the finished length specified in the print. Here, two inches. Now that your part is the right length, measure the height of your stock piece. Refixture the part in the vise. This time, no stick out is required. Use the hand wheels to raise your part under the end mill. Zero your cutter in the Z axis on your part. Your instructor will guide you through this operation in the lab. Raise the knee 20 thousandths of an inch for the first facing cut. Face the first side of your part. Deburr the part if necessary. When finished, measure your part. Repeat the procedure for the opposite face and take the part to the finished dimension specified in the print. Here, one half inch. With the end mill still inserted, turn on the machine spindle. Adjust the spindle speed to 800 RPM. Once the new speed is set, turn the spindle off. Remove the end mill and collet by pushing the power drawbar lever toward the out position. Loosely hold the collet to prevent it from falling. Replace it with the edge finder and its collet. Using the edge finder and the digital readout, or DRO, find the zero reference of both edges of your part. This will allow you to accurately position the next operations. Your instructor will guide you through this operation in the lab. Retract the quill and swap out the edge finder and collet for a drill chuck. Secure the center drill in the chuck using the key to ensure it is tight. Using the DRO and the dimensions given on the print, move to the position of your first drilled hole. Lock the Y-axis of the table to prevent unwanted motion during the next operations. 
lubricate the center drill and drill a pilot hole in the first hole location. Repeat for the other two specified hole locations. Change out the center drill for the number seven drill bit, then lubricate and drill the first hole. Change to the one quarter inch drill bit, lubricate and drill the next two holes. Remove the drill from the chuck and replace the chuck with the end mill and collet you used earlier. Change the speed back to 1200 RPM as before. Center your end mill in one of the one quarter inch holes drilled earlier. In passes of not more than 20 thousandths of an inch, create a slot between the quarter inch holes. Use the lubricant brush to occasionally clean away chips as they accumulate. When you finish milling the slot, deburr the part if needed. Remove your part from the vise. Using the power of television, swap out your parallels for the 30 degree angle block, or ask your instructor for assistance. Fixture your part in the vise against the angle block. The hole should be at the bottom. Ensure the vise is clamped very tightly. Remove the angle block before starting the cut. Zero the Z axis on the topmost edge, then mill the angled surface on the part. Your instructor will guide you through these operations. Finish up the mill part by hand tapping the number seven hole. Now let's move on to the lathe. Insert the round stock you cut on the bandsaw earlier into a one inch collet. Use a pair of calipers to ensure that more than one inch of material is sticking out of the collet. Holding the collet in the headstock with your right hand, tighten the drawbar by rotating the black collar with your left hand. Push the drawbar lever to your left until it clicks into place. Anytime you need to adjust the lathe's spindle speed, press and hold the faster or slower buttons on the control panel while the spindle is running. Release the buttons when you reach the desired speed indicated on the scale. Install the tool and move the cutting head close to the end of the material. Turn on the lathe spindle and then make a light cut across the end face of the round stock until it is completely square. Set the z-axis of the DRO to zero. While the lathe is on, slowly approach the side of the material with your cutting tool until you just scratch the surface. Set the x-axis to the diameter of the material on the DRO, in this case, one inch. Move the cutting tool off the end of the part and set the depth of cut to 10 thousandths of an inch. Move the hand wheels to make your cut being careful not to go too far. Continue making passes of 10 thousandths of an inch until you reach the final diameter. In this case, the DRO should show 0.9 inches on the x-axis. Make sure to lubricate the workpiece and clear chips away as you go. Once the overall diameter is 0.9 inches, turn the second diameter down to 0.6 inches. Look at the DRO to make sure you don't go too far. Install a center drill into a drill chuck and insert the chuck into the tailstock. Set the speed as before. Lubricate the drill and make a small pilot hole. Replace the center drill with the one quarter inch drill bit and then drill the hole in the end of your material. Install the parting tool, change the speed, and lubricate the piece constantly while you cut into the material. Your piece should gently fall down into the bed of the lathe. Be careful, the part will be hot. That's it for the lathe part and the machining lab. Sign up online for an in-person training session and we'll see you in the shop.